Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Inessa and I am an indie author and I publish under the pen name A.N. Sage. Um, I write mostly 1A, some N.A. and for the most part I write fantasy, sci-fi and pretty much anything that is paranormal and magical. So welcome to the channel. On this channel, um, if you are subscribed then you know that we talk a lot about my author journey, some mistakes I made along the way, all the things I'm doing now after having published 14 books with another one on the way in February, and just the general tips and advice that I have for new authors and authors that have been doing it for a while that might want to switch up how they look at writing. So um, if you haven't subscribed yet and that sounds like something that you'd be into, then I definitely recommend doing that. I have a video coming out once a week and it's always writing related, but also planner related, which is why we're here today. We have another planner video and I did say I was going to do a goal planning video. Um, so we're going to get into it because I did just sit down last night and I planned out my goals for next year. Um, not the whole year, just the first quarter of next year because doing the whole year, um, I used to do that before and I found that the goals changed as life does. So now we take it one quarter at a time. Um, if you are interested in following along and you want to use the same goal planner printouts that I am using, that I use every single year to plan my goals, I actually have them linked in the resource library that you can find in the description below. Um, so there's quite a few resources there already and I will be adding more in the new year. But the goal planner is part of the prolific planner, which is what I have here. And it's one of the sections in the prolific planner. It's a planner that I designed. Um, so I'm giving it away for everybody who subscribes here for free. So go ahead and download that. And you can just print out whichever sections you need from that. Um, so I have my goal planner set up in this make shift kind of disc bomb planner. These are happy planner metal um, discs. I don't know if you can hear, I have no nails right now, so you probably can't hear me banging on them, but they're metal discs. Um, and this is a Martha Stewart cover that I got from Staples that I just thought was cute. The color is nice and it's neutral. And you know me, I like neutral and I like pink. So this is a perfect combination. So um, I don't have too much going on in the front, just a bit of deco, some washi cards. And I've kind of shown this already before. Um, so if I can find that video real quick, I'll um, make sure to kind of link it up here. And if not, I'll link a similar planner video for you guys that kind of has to do with whole planning. Um, so I just have a thick vellum in the front and then we get into the actual planner. So this is the prolific planner. I just decorated this belongs to page with an overload of stickers just because I have them. And then we get into the goal section. So I printed these on half letter size. Um, I didn't really worry too much about stuff cutting off or making everything perfect because this is just for me. So this is the goal planner. So the first part that we get into is the yearly goal um, section. And I have these tab off with just Avery tabs um, that you can get on Amazon or in Staples or anywhere really. Um, so I just have these and I just use a label maker to make them. For pens, um, I do use mostly just like a highlighter and one pen in here. I used a um, Tombow in the Dusty Rose to do all these highlights here. Um, and then for the pen, I use a Sarasa Dry. It's my favorite pen, it dries super fast. Um, and I do use uh, a, uh, I used to use a Helponichi. Now I use a Wonderland planner and they both use Tomo River paper. So this is a really good um, pen to use for that if you use that paper. I did a bit of depth on the bottom, but let's get into the goal setting. So this is how I usually like to go through this um, planner, this goals planner, but in general, how I like to set my goals. I do my yearly goals first. So I take a look at the first quarter of the year, and I usually have four different sections. The first section is Cauldron Press, which is my cover design business. If you didn't know, I do design covers for authors. Um, I do a lot of fantasy work, but I'm open to all other genres. 
Um, so if you're interested in working with me, I'm currently booking for May of next year. Um, so I'll have a link for that below if you're an author and you're looking for an affordable cover designer. So the first goal is always for that business. Um, it is the majority of my income as a entrepreneur um, and somebody who works for themselves. So I used to really put that as a goal first. Then my second goal category, my second goal is always my writing for A and Sage, which is my pen name. And now I'm kind of switching it up this year because my third goal now is this channel. I really want to create a really good community here and just to keep growing it. And so um, I think I'm going to make it one of the main goals, the goal categories for next year, because I think it will be fun to see like what we can do here and how I can find new friends on here and relate to you guys and what else I can offer um, from my experience to everybody who might need it for free, essentially. So that's another category. And then the last one is always just personal life. Um, so I divide up and I have these four categories um, and you can pick obviously whatever categories you want and put them on here. And then I'll go through and I put down for the first quarter, what my big main quarter goals are for this goal category. So for cover design for Q1, I'm launching a cover design, fantasy cover design course. So that's the main goal. And I want to have 12 pre-made covers completed and ready somewhere within that quarter just to have a bank of them on hand. So I don't have to always rush to make pre-mades because people do like pre-made covers and I love the creativity of them. So I want to have some banked. For my writing, um, I have a release that's coming out in February. So that's a main big goal. Um, and then I also want to plot a new project. And I always have two, by the way, for each one of these, one main one and then one sub one. And I'll show you how I handle those in these sections here. Then for YouTube, um, I'd like to reach 1100 subs in the first quarter. I mean, if we can go past that, that would be great. I know there's some people like uh, Sarah Cannon on Heart Breathings, and I'll link her channel below that she, uh, when she sets her goal, she does like a, um, like a hopeful, like a better and then best kind of or whatever it is, like regular, better, best, like three different ones for numbers, um, for anything that's quantifiable. And that's a really cool idea. Um, for me personally, I just kind of aim for the lowest that I think I can get because I know myself. And if there's like a, a higher number or a higher um, quantifiable kind of goal to reach, I'll always aim for that and I'll kill myself doing it. So um, I always aim for the lower. So for me, 1100 subs, I think might be doable in three months time um, in the first quarter. So that's kind of the big goal for this channel. And then I also want to have some content batched um, for two months of videos, um, just so I have stuff to pull from. So kind of like the pre-mates here. So instead of um, right now I'm filming piecemeal kind of um, the videos as they come up, but I have a whole um, list of ideas that I kind of want to get through. And so I want to have those batched and ready to go. Um, and for personal goals, um, I want to work as my main goal on my work-life balance, um, which I don't have a lot of right now because I do work for myself and I'd like to be more active. I used to be very active, but that was before everything that's happened in the world where like my yoga studio shut down and there's like all this stuff. And so I kind of want to become a bit more active as much as I can when working this much. So that's how I do this yearly goal section. And then I move into, um, the goals. So the way this planner is separated, the goals are they're separated by goal, not by quarter. Um, so you can always have your goals stacked together, which works for me. That's why I designed it that way. Um, so the first section, and this is what I have for that first section. So this area here, I don't write anything in it. Um, when I first start out, this is kind of like a brain up idea. So as I think of more tasks, for this goal category, I'll list them here. If I have any like brainstorm ideas, I need to put them here. I'll put them in this area that I've already decorated. Um, and then I actually start using this planner in Q1 on this section. So what I would put here is my Q1 project, which I take 
from the yearly goal. So I have two, I have the design course and I have pre-made covers. As you can see, I have three lead tasks. So the lead, uh, four lead tasks, sorry. The lead tasks are like your main tasks that you know you want, you need to work on, like they're big ones um, for this project. Um, and because I have two projects for every single one, the main one gets three lead tasks and then the secondary one gets um, one. So my lead tasks for the design course are finish recording the course, which I'm almost done. Um, I'll be done this month actually. So I can check that off a bit earlier, which is great. Um, write the class descriptions and upload and promote the course. And then for the pre-made covers, design 12 covers, pretty standard. So if we switch back to the next goal, which is my writing, again, this page is blank. And then we have the two goals that I have, with, and that's the release of the things the river hides on February 22nd, and then the new project I'll be working on. So for the things the River Heights release, my main lead tasks are set up Facebook ads, um, work on social promos, and finalize online tours and things like that. And then for the new project, it's pawning. Then we move into goal three, which is this channel. Blank page here for notes throughout the year. Um, and then my two uh, projects, my two goal projects, um, for Q1 from the yearly goal section. And for the reaching more subs, my lead tasks are weekly videos, get new channel art, and get some more social promos going. And for the content batching, I have batch record eight videos. For personal life, I have a little bit less because there, there's not too much I can do. They're very um, kind of self-explanatory for work-life balance. I have no work on weekends, but there's a bit more to it that I'll show you after, but the lead task is not working on the weekends wherever I can. Um, and to be more active, I want to, the lead task is to walk at least three times a week um, for now. And then there's other things I'm gonna introduce later. Um, so after you finish up this section, you have a section for your Q1 project that looks like this. When it's blank, it looks like this. So this is a Q2 project. So every single quarter falls under this goal category, which is why I like to have the category separated because now I can look through this goal category and see for each one, for each quarter, what it looks like for me. Um, so when you look at it, it's blank. There's a blank page for notes. And this is the page that I use for those secondary projects, so secondary mini goals. And then this page I use for the main big goal. So if we look at the um, Q1 project under goal one, which is Cauldron Press Designs, this keeps popping out, sorry. Um, so if you look under Cauldron Press Designs, which is goal category one, my Q1 project is design um, the course uh, launch. So, uh, sorry, design course launch. Um, and so I just kind of have a description of why this goal is important, what I want to do. And at the bottom, just kind of like why one, one sentence, why I'm working on this goal in this quarter. Um, there's a start and end date that I fill out here. And then we break it down into project tasks. I don't go too crazy. Like I won't write down small minimal tasks um, just because I can figure that out as I'm planning. This is just for me to have like a list of ideas um, and tasks that I know need to get done, like record remaining videos, edit remaining videos, upload remaining videos. I have to write the class and course descriptions, add more resources to the, to the classes. I need to design the course web page in Thinkific and I need to design the course landing page on the Cauldron Press website. And then I have to run Facebook ads and I have to promote the whole course on social media. So these are kind of, you have your lead tasks, which is your main three tasks here, and then you break them down into smaller tasks, more doable monthly and weekly tasks here. Then under the secondary small project, which for me was the pre-made covers, um, I have a pre-made cover bank and all I did was a checklist for 12 colors covers, that's how many I want to design, and I'll check them off as I create them. Then we move into goal two. And so we already went over this, but if we flip over to our Q1 project section, you can see for the release and the launch of the things, the river hides, I have quite a few more tasks to go. The hardcover release, which I'm actually doing tomorrow. So that's all taken care of. I already checked that off. I'm doing that earlier um, in the year, just kind of before Christmas is a fun little thing. Um, 
I have to send arcs or their swags from artist illustrations because I'm getting quite a bit of artist illustrations commissioned. So I want to order some swag with it. Um, I need to upload signed paperbacks to my website. I need to upload some of the swag that has been created um, to the website. Um, I need to design more notebooks, um, four more swags. There's a lot of swag. Then there's like testing ads, running ads. Um, there's social media. There's book talkers, follow up on some of the tours that were booked. Um, and then I want to have a release party. So those are all the smaller tasks. And then if you look originally at the big tasks, the lead tasks was Facebook ads, social promos, online tours, and they fall somewhere in there, but they're broken down more so. Um, and then for the new project, because my lead task for it is plot the new book. So I have this section to kind of play around with and I'm using it to do another checklist. Um, and in here, I just have set a plotting notebook, do a rough plot, do a scene plot, do character development, do world development, history and politics development, do research for some of the characters and then set up the Scrivener file. And that's what I want to accomplish in Q1. Um, and then if we move into the channel, I kind of did, it's the same thing. So you have your main goal. I'm kind of writing about it, why that's important to do in Q1. Um, and for me, that's to form an online community and grow this online community. So that's the main sentence there. Um, and then a checklist of everything that I need to do, the smaller tasks um, that kind of fall into some of these lead tasks, but a bit more nitty gritty. Um, and then for content batching, which is, Project number two, the smaller project for the quarter for this goal category um, is I just have the eight videos I want to content batch on here um, and then a checklist for recorded, edited and uploaded and I'll check them off as they go. For personal, um, it's much shorter. Um, I have work-life balance. And then the project tasks are like no work on weekends or a minimum of three hours because sometimes I have clients that have last minute needs that I need to fulfill or even for my own stuff like for A and Sage like there's some stuff that needs to happen on the weekend so sometimes you need to do it but I don't want to work more than three hours on the weekend I don't want to be working past 6 p.m I've been working very late lately um, but we've had a lot going on and it's holiday so it's understandable but no working after 6 p.m in that first quarter I want to take regular lunch breaks. Um, I need to do my daily tarot card draws and weekly tarot card draws. And I need to spend more time on my practice. Um, and so over here, my main sentence is work on your mental and spiritual health uh, because that's very important to me. I just need to be like more relaxed. I've been really anxious lately. And I think kind of having this goal set is important and it will make it so that I don't run myself into the ground. <laughs> um, and then for... I just have it labeled weekly walks, but um, I need to figure out the weather um, when I'm planning because that's something I'm not doing. And then I'm using it bad weather because we live in Canada and it's winter there now. But I'm using bad weather as an excuse. Whereas I think if I plan ahead of time and I kind of looked at the weather ahead of time and I said, okay, on these three or four days or whatever it is, the weather is actually going to be decent. So I'm going to make time and plan time to go for walks. Um, my mom is uh, kind of going into retirement now, so she's going to have some more free time. So I figured we can walk together. Um, we can do weekend family walks with my husband. And I do want to start doing yoga at home at least once a week to start. It's not going to be the same. I did hot yoga before and I've been practicing hot yoga for a very long time. So it won't be the same, but it will be something. It will be a start to get back into it. Um, so that's what I have here. Then in the back, I have a notes section if I need it, a list section, and kind of grid paper section. And I just, and some stickers, I think, that came with some sort of, I think it was a tool planner. And they give you these plan stickers, which I haven't used. So what do I do with these when I'm done? So like, I feel like if you have these just in a book like this, um, chances are you're going to forget you have it. So what I actually do, and you forget to check it, and then the whole thing becomes like a moot point. So what I do is I have a board in my office um, that I will take a picture of, um, and I'll pop it like somewhere here so you can see it. Um, and what I do is I make these note cards based on what I've done here. Um, the first one says 
vision and on the back of it, I have my word of the year. My word um, for this upcoming year is balance. Um, and so I have this up there just to kind of have like a little reminder. Um, and then I have these four cards that I made. They're all highlighted as Q1. And what I have on them is if you look, is I have the four different categories. So I have Cauldron Press, AM Sage, the YouTube channel, and personal life. And I have the two goals that we just went through um, listed, the two main project goals, like the main projects I'm working on, and then the lead tasks for each one of them listed. And I have these set up on this board and I just, it looks good. It keeps me motivated. It's something I look at when I walk into the office every morning. Um, and it also really helps me have a visual towards the end of the year of what I worked on um, in every single quarter. So um, I'll, the, I'll put the image again up here as a little reminder of what that looks like as I have it set up right now. So I just have them popped in here because I have just filled them out. And that, my friends, is how I plan my goals. Um, it doesn't take long. It would take longer if I did the whole year, which is why I don't do the whole year of goal. <laughs> Another reason, <laughs> because, you know, work-life balance. Um, so, um, but for the most part, it doesn't take me very long. It takes like maybe like an hour, an hour and a half to figure out the entire quarter, um, take breaks, take a few days if you need to do it over a week. But for me, I find planning my goals and having these projects kind of set up is really helpful in keeping me on track of what I want to achieve in my career, um, just as, as a person too, and my personal growth, and just helps me kind of funnel everything down so that I don't get distracted by um, other like the shiny new penny um, and just trying new things where I just kind of stick on top. Um, and if there is a shiny new penny, I have a note section back here or I have those goal lists, right? That um, for every single goal, I can just put down um, for that section, other ideas to work on in future um, quarters or in the next year. So I find this system works immensely well. I've been using it for years now and it has worked really well for me. So if you're into it, make sure you download it from the resource library. All you have to do is sign up um, for the email mailing list um, to get access to the resource library forever. So it's a good resource to have. I find it very useful and hopefully you will as well. So with that said, um, we have just moved and I promised you guys a new office tour. So we're gonna be doing that next week. So that's the video we have coming up next week. I thought it might be fun right before the new year to do a new office tour. I'm really in love with it. I'm happy with how everything turned out. Um, the lighting in there is amazing. So no more like dark videos, everything's gonna be like nice and bright and airy. Um, so I'm super excited to um, have that be um, how we go forward with this channel. And I think that will work into some of the rebranding as well, just that visual. So I'll have to play around with it and see. So with that said, as always, thank you so much for watching this. If you watched the whole thing, you're amazing. Um, I hope this helped you. And if you're going to try goal planning, I'd love to hear um, what your plans are, what your goals are for the first quarter. So make sure you comment below and let me know. And I will talk to you guys next week. And I hope you stay magical. Bye.